This diagram shows the changes in blood flow as the blood flows away from the heart and around the body. You can see over on the left hand side that the pressure in the aorta is much much higher than it is as the blood passes away from the heart through the arteries, arterioles and eventually into the veins. You can also see about halfway along that the blood returns to the heart through the vena cava and enters the pulmonary arteries so the heart pumps blood into the pulmonary arteries and you have a sort of mirror image but much smaller of the changes in pressure that you find in the aorta as the blood passes up towards the lungs. You can then see that the blood passes into the small arteries of the lungs called the arterioles and then into the capillaries. The blood picks up oxygen from the little air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. The blood passes through the pulmonary veins back to the heart and then you switch back to the left hand side of the heart where you can see that the blood is pumped out of the heart into the aorta and into the systemic circulation. Now these differences in pressure obviously suggest that you'll probably expect to find some differences in the blood vessels in different parts of the system. So you'd expect an artery to be different to a vein and a vein to be different to a capillary. And maybe the arteries further away from the heart are different to the arteries closer to the heart. Let's have a look. This is a microscope slide showing an artery, a vein and bottom right a capillary. You can see that the artery has got very thick walls suggesting a great deal of strength. You can also see that the artery has three layers. It has layer number one which is called the tunica interna which basically comprises a layer of squamous epithelial cells which present a very smooth surface for the blood to flow through. The next layer outwards, number two, is called the tunica media. The media meaning middle layer and the tunica media has got a lot of elastic tissue in, it's got some muscle in and it's got some strengthening tissue called collagen. The elastic tissue helps arteries, especially those close to the heart, to absorb the pulses of high pressure blood that are coming out from the heart every time it beats. We'll return to that in a moment. Layer number three is the tunica externa and you can see that in this particular artery that's a lot thinner. Um, it does have some collagen in, some uh, strengthening tissue. But it's the tunica media that we're particularly interested in here and particularly interested in this elastic tissue. If we imagine that this artery is the aorta, the aorta is receiving blood at the highest pressure of all. It's right next door to the heart and every time the heart pushes blood out there is a pulse of blood which stretches that elastic tissue outwards. When the heart relaxes that elastic tissue springs back into shape and closes the artery off again. Not completely obviously but that's enough to urge the blood along a little bit so you get a certain amount of smoothing due to this characteristic which is called elastic recoil. So elastic recoil helps to smooth the surges of high pressure blood. The other thing I'd notice uh, on that as well is that although you can't see it, if this was an artery from an older person or somebody who was a lifelong smoker, you may well find that there is less elastic tissue there and that leads to a condition called hardening of the arteries which means that the arteries are then thrown on their strength, sheer strength, the thickness of the walls in order to deal with the pressure of blood and sometimes that doesn't work properly 
and sometimes the artery will actually burst. If we look at the vein at the top right you can see that it's also got three layers. Layer 1 is pretty much the same because a sim single layer of squamous epithelial cells is the same wherever you are. But layer number 2 is much thinner. So layer number 2, the tunica media, much thinner. You haven't got that same need for strength. The blood is at very low pressure in veins. Um, and consequently the wall of the vein compared to the overall size is much, much thinner. And although that might sound like uh, a disadvantage, it's actually the strength of a vein because it means that the veins in the lower body particularly uh, are squeezed by the movements of the legs and the lower limbs, the lower part of the body, and that helps to squeeze the blood back towards the heart. Remember that the blood's at very low pressure and it's also having to counteract the force of gravity which is trying to drag it back down into your feet all the time. So this characteristic of thin walls is very helpful to the movement of blood back to the heart through veins. You also find that in a lot of the veins, particularly those in the lower part of the body, there are little one-way valves as well, which also help to prevent blood flowing backwards so that the only direction the blood can move, no matter how sluggishly, is back towards the heart. Finally, bottom right, you've got a capillary, and you'll notice straight away that a capillary has only got one layer. It's the endothelial layer, the tunica interna. So capillaries are just a single layer of squamous epithelial cells held together with our old friend basement membrane. And a little bit later in the unit, we'll be talking about the job of capillaries in the exchange of material between the blood and the tissues and cells that the blood is flowing past. Let's go back to arteries for a moment. Uh, one of the things about arteries is that closer to the heart, the artery has got to deal with the changes in pressure due to the heart pumping. Further away from the heart, the arteries have got much more to do with diverting blood to where it's needed. So let's just take a quick look at how that's accomplished. Here's our original diagram that we looked at in the first session. And you can see that I've changed the labels and that for the aorta and pulmonary artery I've added CA after. And if you look at the key on the bottom left of the picture, you'll see that CA stands for conducting artery. So these are arteries that are concerned purely with absorbing big changes in pressure and conducting the blood away from the heart. And they consequently have a high percentage of elastin and not quite so much muscle. Further away from the heart, such as the renal artery and the iliac artery, you'll see the letters DA. These are only examples, by the way. And DA stands for distributing artery. These are ones which can open and close to divert blood to where it's needed. So if you need more blood in your lower body, for instance, your iliac artery can actually relax. The muscles can relax, allowing more blood to flow through. If the blood needs to go somewhere else, then it can be diverted away from that area, uh, as we'll see in the next picture. So let's have a look and see what happens when you exercise. So this is just representing the changes in flow during exercise. Not much happening to the brain, obviously. That needs a constant supply of oxygen in the blood. But if you look at the skeletal muscle, you'll see that the blue bar represents the figure at rest. And the red bar tells you how much blood is being sent out to the muscles while we exercise. And there's a huge increase in blood flow. And if you look over towards the right hand side of the graph, you can see that that's been at the expense of the abdominal organs and the kidneys and also some other structures which aren't shown on the diagram. So what we're doing is 
diverting blood away from the core and out to the extremities uh, so that the muscles have lots of oxygen to carry out aerobic respiration so you can keep going. Also notice next to skeletal muscle you've got skin and uh, as we discovered in thermoregulation when you exercise you get hot and when you get hot you vasodilate so the little surface blood vessels open up and so you can see there that that's reflected in the increased flow of blood out to the skin surface. Finally let's look at the interface between the arteries and veins the place where that all-important exchange of gases and nutrients and waste products between blood and cells takes place. So we talk about the capillaries. We're going to look at that exchange in more detail later on in the unit. But for now, here are the three main types of capillary. We're going to be concerned with the ones in the middle. And these are similar to the blood vessel that we talked about when we were studying the glomerulus in the nephron. So these are, for want of a better word, porous capillaries. They've got little openings called fenestrations uh, in the walls of the blood vessels, which allows small molecules and water to pass out of the bloodstream and into either the nephron or, as we will discover, into the tissue spaces. For now we're not going to concern ourselves with the capillaries on the left and on the right. They are something for another day. There is an assignment linked to this session and it consists of studying some microscope slides uh, which you'll find on Moodle and answering some questions about the differences in structure and function that you can deduce from those slides. So I would recommend that what you do is to maybe run through this video once more, look at the e-copy of the unit booklet on Moodle, look at the PowerPoint slides on Moodle, and then when you feel ready, uh, basically on you go to Moodle and have a go at this untimed assignment and I hope you enjoy doing it.